produces healing. Faith produces strength. Faith produces purpose. And faith produces victory in all that may come against you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah. It is so good to be here this wonderful Sunday morning. We are so excited. We are here in the sanctuary and online and on Facebook, and we are just excited to come to lift up the name of Jesus because his name is worthy to be praised. We are excited today. Hallelujah, because the Lord is good. He is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We are the St. Matthew's Baptist Church family, and we are so glad and so excited that you took time out of your busy schedule this morning to stop by and have a word and hear a word and be excited as we lift the name of the Lord and give him praise, glory, and magnify him. Hallelujah on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We should come in the sanctuary with a spirit of expectancy in our hearts on today because he is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We came to magnify him. I didn't come here. I'm glad to see you, but I didn't come to look at you. I came to give him praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask everyone in the sanctuary to stand for our devotional scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Calling your attention to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. There you will find these words. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a, ci is a, as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For thy brethren and companions sake, I will now say peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord I God, I will seek thy good. May the Lord add a blessing to the readings, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us reverence our hearts for a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Is there a hallelujah in his house? Oh, you can do better than that. Is there a hallelujah in his house? Has he been good to you? Hallelujah. Has he delivered you this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Did he set you on your way this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. Is he worthy of your hallelujah? Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Gracious and heavenly Father, Abba, we come unto you today first to give you gratitude, first to say thank you. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for a portion of our reasonable mind and health and strength, and thank you for raiment on our back and food in our belly. God, we thank you that we're on this side of the dirt this morning, which means we have another chance to get it right. So, God, we thank you for this opportunity. God, right now, we just want to thank you for this Sunday. It's a day we've never seen before and one we will never see again. So, God, for that, we are grateful and we're thankful. God, we thank you for keeping us all night and waking us up with a finger of love. God, we thank you for all the things that you've kept from us and all the things that you've allowed us to have. God, you're so good to us, and for that we say thank you. And right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you just bless those who are on the front line still fighting this pandemic today, God. We ask you to bless those who are en route this morning. And we ask you to bless those who had a desire to come but could not. God, keep your hands around them. And God, right now, we ask that you bless this service. 
God, look in on this small church. God, grace us with your presence because your word says, well, there are two or three that are gathered in your name. There you will be in the midst. So, Lord, we welcome you today. We're on your agenda and on your time. God, right now we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins this morning. God, make us all clean vessels for your use and your purpose. And let this word today fall on good ground so that it may continue to bear good fruit for the continuing spreading and building of your kingdom. And God, let no flesh get any glory, but God, let you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, because you and you alone are worthy. And we said this prayer in Jesus' name. And every believer shouted out together, thank God. Oh, thank God. And amen. We want to welcome you to St. Matthew's this morning. And if you didn't come with a hallelujah on your heart, I have one that you can borrow. I want it back at the end of service. Amen. Oh, amen. Is there a hallelujah in his house? Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you this morning. For those who are watching and for those who are here in the sanctuary, God bless you this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you this morning. And for the announcement, we want to make sure that we all know that we are having an awesome Bible study on Wednesdays. We want to let you know that Sunday school, the greatest Sunday school on this side of heaven. We want to let you know that we have the greatest Sunday school on this side of heaven. Amen. He's not going to let me. I'm going to keep that in there. Amen. We got the greatest Sunday school on this side of heaven. It starts at 10 o'clock from 10 to 11 on Sunday. And then you're here in the greatest worship experience with the greatest pastor on this side of heaven. Amen. Oh, can you say amen to that again? Amen. amen. At this time, we'd like to turn it over to the AV team. Amen. amen. AV, it's in your hand. Good morning. You have reached the St. Matthew's Baptist Church 11.30 a.m. service. We are so excited to be able to gather in person again. That being said, the announcements are as follows. Sunday school via Zoom at 10 a.m. Please join us. Go to our website and click on Join to find the Sunday school Zoom meeting. The SMBC Feeding Ministry invites you to help meet the needs of the community as we do so every Sunday afternoon. Please see Elder Derek Henry to volunteer to be one of our premier feeding ministry leaders. We are also accepting non-perishable, not expired items such as canned goods. And Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., Pastor Turner will be teaching Bible study. And right now he's teaching on the book by Charles C. Ryrie titled, basic theology. If you have your book, amen, and if you don't have the book yet, go on out and get it and join us at Bible study. Coming attractions. You are all invited to a Soulful Friday starting August 20th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. There will be something for the whole family as Fridays are about to get its soul back. Beginning this week, we will be implementing our three-tier color wristband system to identify interaction comfort level for in-person fellowship. Each color will represent one of three acceptable in-person salutations. We hope you've chosen your wristband color before you came in, and we will respect whatever color choice you've made. Red means no interaction, complete social distancing. Yellow means an elbow shake or you can throw them bows and green is a traditional greeting such as we greet one another with a holy kiss we can hug or shake hands we are the church that sees the excellence in you and now we return to our regularly scheduled service and oh yes we thank you for rocking with us Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. This Praise is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. 
and just be glad. Hallelujah. He's been good to us all week long and kept us. Hallelujah. Never left us. He's just been God all week long. And this is our opportunity to do it on a corporate level, to worship God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and open your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. If you could, just saturate the house with your praise Hallelujah. and with your adoration Hallelujah. and give God some praise that he's due. We came to celebrate the king. Will you help us celebrate his name? Hallelujah. 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 When you feel like it, just jump up on your feet. We're going to do this together. Hallelujah. We love you today, God. It's a real simple song. Let's celebrate our king. He's a ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Come on, Zion. We praise our king. Let's celebrate our king. He's a ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our king. He's worthy of our praise. He's the Lord God and ancient of the Lord God and ancient of the lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Hallelujah. He's awesome and glorious, excellent King. He's worthy of all of our praise. He's righteous and glorious, so let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our King. Celebrate our King. The ruler of everything. The ruler of everything. Excellent King, He's worthy of all my praise. Awesome and glorious, so let's lift Him up from on Zion. We praise our King. Awesome and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Can you help us glory? Yeah. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. And glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Can you help me say it? He's reigning over us. Can we say it one more time? Awesome and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Can you help me say it? He's reigning over He's a great God. 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 The name of the Lord. He's a great God. He's greatly to be praised. He's a great God. From the rising of the sun, he's a great God. To the going down of the same, he's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a Lord, strong and mighty. He's a great God. He's a Lord, mighty in battle. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. I love the Lord. Yes, I do. He's a great God. 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 Great is his name. Yeah. He's a great God. I'm greatly to be praised. He's a great God. He's a 
great God. He's the great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's the great God. He's the great God. He's the great God. He's the great God. From the rising of the sun. He's the great God. Come to the setting of the same. He's the great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Anybody know that he's great? He's a great God. Is the name of the Lord great to you? He's a great God. Is the name of the Lord great to you? He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's a great God. He is God mighty in battle. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious, he's reigning over us. He's a great God. Come on and give the name of the Lord some praise. If you're known to be great, anything that's great is better than good. Hallelujah. I dare you to jump on your feet and give God some praise. Has he done anything for you? Hallelujah. Great is Bless the Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord. Hallelujah. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. 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 This next song. Hallelujah. 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 Simply says that the blood of Jesus still works. I'm a <laughs> the blood is cleansing, the blood is healing, the blood is saving. The blood of Jesus still works. Hallelujah. I'm glad to report that it's never lost its power. Yes, it works. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. His blood still works, and I'm glad to report. For that is never lost its power. Yes, it works. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. His blood still works, and I'm here to testify. That God's not dead, He's still alive. He's still alive. That man was shed way back on Calvary. He's the same blood that's working out for me. Oh, His blood redeems me from the stain of sin. And his blood cleanses me deep down within And if you ask me how I'm made and how I've overcome I can tell you it's because of the blood His blood still works and I'm glad to be for that it's never lost Yes, it works. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, 
Come on, put those hands together. If you're excited about the blood of Jesus, it still works. Come on, it still works. I wish I had a church that knew it still works. 
It still reaches from the highest mountain. It still flows through the lowest valley. It's still the strength that gets me through day to day. It's the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. It still works. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God for the blood. If you can't thank God for nothing else, thank him for the blood. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. I can't get to heaven without the blood. It's the blood. Come on, come on. Y'all like tonight. Y'all are light today. I said the blood. I ain't talking about what your mama did. I'm not talking about what your daddy did. I'm not talking about all the accomplishments you made. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give thanks and praise to God for another wonderful opportunity to be in the house of prayer once again. We thank God for the St. Matthew's Church giving honor to our pastor, uh, Dr. Alan S. Turner. We love and bless God for you on this morning. To the officers and deacons, uh, to Mother Turner, uh, to the saints, members, and friends, Lottie Dottie, and everybody. It is good to be here. <laughs> it is good to be here. Uh, we praise and thank God for another opportunity to stand. For those of you who may not know who I am, I'm Minister Derek Abram, a son of the house. <laughs> and uh, this is a homecoming for me. Um, I haven't been back to preach at St. Matthew's in almost two years since I moved uh, from California to Texas. And now me and my lovely wife, Charday, have uh, made our way back home. And uh, we thank and praise God for getting us here. Um, man, it's good to be here. It is good to be here. Y'all, y'all excuse me because, uh, whew. man, man, you, you think about where you were when you started. Um, when I first came to St. Matthew's, I was, uh, for lack of a better word, broken. Uh, I was 30 years old. Uh, had a had a had a zeal for God, needed to grow in, in knowledge, and um, I stand here today, the man of God that I am, because of this church, because of the teachings of Doctor Doctor Turner, who I affectionately call Pop Turner. So, um, to be here, standing here today, uh, is truly a gift from God. Um, I won't belabor the time. Um, get us out of here real quick. I'm not a long-winded preacher by no stretch of the imagination, but uh, I do have. <laughs> Somebody said that's what they all say, but I, I'm going I'm to stick true to that today, amen? But there is a word from the Lord. Um, Romans chapter 8. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. <sighs> what a privilege to carry. Oh, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pains we bear. We bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you, you Lord. It's okay to worship just for a little bit. Thank you thank you lord oh thank i gotta thank you lord oh i just want to thank you you've been so You've been so good. 
Ah. Lord, you've been, you've been so good. I know it's not the new stuff, but it, it still reaches the heart. Oh, you've been so good. Oh, and I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, a thankful praise is appropriate right there. Come on. If you got something to thank God for, don't be quiet with it. I said, if you got something to thank God for, how he, how he blessed you, how he kept you, you could have went crazy in that situation. You could have lost your whole mind. You could have lost everything. <laughs> He's still been good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to preach in a minute, but I got to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, how we bless you, how we thank you, how we honor you, God. For your word says it's your goodness that leads all men to repentance. So, Lord, we give you great, great praise. We thank you. We honor you. We adore you. We worship you. We love you on today. We thank you now for your preach word, God, that will go forth. Thank you, Lord, that you'll take me out of myself, hide me behind your cross. I thank you, God, that you'll stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my lips. And I thank you that no flesh shall glory in this moment, but we will hear from heaven what you have to say to the church on today. Bless our pastor, bless the St. Matthew's Church family as a whole. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Verse 18, when you're there, please let me know by saying I'm there. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord says, uh, and I'm reading from the New International Version. It may sound a little different but yours, from yours, but it does mean the same. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I'll read it again. I consider that our present sufferings. Uh, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I think the King James Version says, For I reckon that our present suffering shall not be worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Just want to tag this text. Get ready for the glory. Get ready for the glory. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to begin this message with a proclamation. I am grateful. <laughs> I am grateful. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my health and my strength. I'm grateful for a renewed mind. I'm grateful for a beautiful wife, an exceptional son, wonderful friends and family. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my church home and my pastor, grateful for the few worldly possessions that I have uh, been able to attain. But one thing that I'm grateful for out of all of these things that I've just mentioned, I'm grateful that God has never left me nor forsaken me. That may not be much for you, but that show is enough for me. Uh, for when I look over my life uh, and all of the experiences that I have had in a short amount of time here on earth, if I could choose one thing that I'm most grateful for, I'm grateful for the fact that God has never left me nor forsaken me. I know that that statement sounds a little cliche because we say it all the time in church. Um, and usually people say it when they want to get you to shout. <laughs> uh, but if you've ever been afforded the opportunity uh, to experience a dark or difficult time, uh, and, and, and feeling like as if what seemingly felt like God's absence in your life only to find him to snatch you out, not just in the nick of time, but reveal to you in time that he was not only there, but he was there the entire time. It kind of hit different when you say it out loud. God has never left me nor 
forsaken me. Maybe you've never done anything worthy of God's absence in your life or his distance in your life. Uh, Maybe your life has added up to where uh, you were always entitled to be in the presence of God. But I'm not that kind of child. (laughs) Uh, For you see, there were times uh, when God stuck around, when I acted like I didn't even want him around. Y'all, he stayed even when I didn't. There was times where I told God, all right, God, I'm going to head out. And he said, all right, son, I'll be here when you get back. But don't stay gone too long because I'll come find you. (laughs) And then for good measure, he dispatches angels to keep me from those seen and unseen dangers. Those, Those dangers I didn't see coming. But then he kept me from those that I saw the warning signs of and I indulged anyway. Uh, And then for good measure, extra measure, he had grace and mercy to follow me. So excuse me if I don't shout off the house in the car, if I don't shout off my bills being paid. My shout comes when I think about how God has never left nor forsaken. My money has left me. I mean, money is funny, change is strange. It make you holler every time you need a dollar. There are people who are finicky, finite, and fickle. They walk out all the time. (laughs) There's even some people that may not walk out your life, but they'll look at the door. (laughs) But one thing I can thank God for is that he's never left me nor forsaken me. That's good news today. I said that's good news today. As a matter of fact, the amount of joy that fills my heart every time I say it, it's getting more harder and harder to contain because I think about where I was and I think about how he kept me. I think about where I was and how he brought me. I think about where I was and how he elevated me. God has never left me nor forsake me. And here's a shout. And he never will. Ooh. Tough crowd today. I said, and he never will. You know, never is a very emphatic statement. A lot of times people say never say never because you you just don't know. But here's one thing I do know, according to Hebrews 13 and 5. The Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That, That phrase is considered what's called a palindrome. I'm not an English major, but I do know a few things. Palindrome, that's a word that can be said frontwards and backwards, and it says the same thing. So this whole sentence is a palindrome. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Reverse it. You forsake nor you leave, never will I. I'll do it again. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Flip it. You forsake nor you leave, never will I. He's got your front. He's got your back. He's got your sides. I will never leave you nor forsake you. David said it this way. I've been young. Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Now, Derek, I know what you're asking. Derek, Derek, okay. What does your opening statement, what does your proclamation have to do with what you just read in the Bible? I get that God will never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, but how relevant is that when I'm going through, when the pressures of, uh, of life or the pain of my suffering seems greater than the promise of an all-loving, omnipresent God? And I have to admit that when you are in your current situation, when you are in your present affliction, whatever that affliction may be, it is hard to look at your affliction as a mere means to an end. Uh, but if you look at it through the eyes of the spirit and not the flesh, you come to understand that your present suffering cannot equate to the future glory that will be revealed in you. So if I can give you anything to take from this message with you this week, is that if God will never leave you nor forsake you, then what God has invested in you is greater than the process he has designed to manifest it or manifest his glory out of you. I'll say it again. If God will never leave you nor forsake you, then what God has invested in you is greater than the process that he has designed to manifest his glory through you. Present suffering, future glory. Now, here's a harsh reality. Purpose has a painful process. You're tripping if you think otherwise. 
There's a, there's a painful process uh, uh, to your purpose. There's a painful process to progression. There's a process attached to your purpose, and it involves some level of discomfort, some level of affliction, pain, in order to reach its full maturation. And it's usually most painful when you're submitting to the will of God uh, and striving to be better for him. It gets painful when your goals and ambitions are in direct conflict with the assignment God has for your life. It gets painful when significant people in your life exit your life at seemingly the most critical time of your life. It gets painful when you put your agenda to the side to help others achieve their success over and over again, only to have those same folk after you've exhausted all of your energy and resources <laughs> on them, come back to you, not with the hand of assistance, but with the letter of resignation. Say, <laughs> now we're just in two different spaces in our life. As if your contribution to their life then help propel them to the success that they have in their life. All I'm suggesting is that if you're going to experience the blessing of walking in a manifested purpose, you have to come to understand and embrace the fact that there's a painful process that comes with it. But don't get stuck in it. Go through it. I'll say it again. Don't get stuck in it. Go through it. Because there's a glory waiting to be revealed that's greater than the suffering of your reality. Y'all like Bible examples, right? Let me give you a few. Come here, Abraham. What's the painful process? The process painful? Excuse me. Abraham's, yeah, yeah, it was painful uh, having to walk up the hill to sacrifice Isaac. Already had to let go or part ways with one son. There's nowhere in the Bible where it, it says that Abraham didn't love Ishmael. But that was wifey's plan, so I understand why that had to go down. <laughs> uh, but Isaac, Isaac was the son of promise. He was the one that, 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 that he said, okay, this is the one. It was, it was painful to set him up on the altar, tie him up after I told him God will provide, looking like a liar to my own child. But I went through the process, and God blessed me. Come here, David. Was the process painful? It was painful leaving my father's sheepfold and going to fight a giant for a king who was too scared to fight the giant, only to have that same king whom I served faithfully get jealous of me and try to kill me because my anointing caused me to ascend while his disobedience caused him to be dethroned. But I had to go through the process, and God blessed me. Come here, Samson. Was the process painful? <laughs> yes, it was painful. Uh, having my eyes gouged and my hair cut because of my own sin and arrogance. I was bald, blind, and belittled. I should have known better than to play with my anointing. But little did I know that God would use the painful results of my decisions to position me to carry out the purpose in which I was born to complete. I went through the process, and God blessed me. Hey there, Jesus. Was the process painful? I was in so much pain in Gethsemane that I asked my father if there was any other way this could go down. Then to add insult to injury, the big three that I keep closest to me couldn't stay up long enough to pray or look out for me. The pain left me isolated and inconsolable. But I conceded that it's not my will, but the will of my father that must be done. I went through the process, and God blessed me. I got some non-biblical examples. Millie King, come here. Was the process painful? Yeah, it was painful. I had to get up and pick cotton before school, <laughs> go to school, then come home, pick more cotton, get dinner ready with my mama, then go and do homework for hours on end, only to come all the way to California from Louisiana, and, and, and live to see one son die a day after I, after I gave birth uh, and then see another son die in my womb. But I went through the process, and God blessed me. Come here, Sullivan Abram. Was the process painful? Yeah, I went through segregation in Jim Crow, survived lynching attempts on my life, went to war to serve a country that didn't treat me like a citizen of the country when I got back, survived heartache and heartbreak, Raised five children, then got two more after the age of 50 that I had to provide and protect for. It was painful, but I went through the process, and God blessed me. Now, out of all the examples I shared, uh, the common denominator is that their faith in God gave the grace they needed 
to endure their suffering and for the glory to be revealed. For the Bible declares that Abraham became the father of many nations. Glory revealed. The Bible also declares that David was not only a beloved king, but he was mentioned twice in the Bible as a man after God's own heart, whose seed Solomon became the richest and wisest king in all of Israel. Glory revealed. The Bible declares that Samson killed more at his death than he did while he walked around living. Glory revealed. And you know Jesus, right? The Bible declares that he endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. He has also been given a name that is above every name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee still has to bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every knee still has to bow. Every tongue still has to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory revealed. As for my non-biblical examples, Millie King met Sullivan Abram in 1973. They began a courtship, and from this courtship, they married in 1977. And from this union, they presented two children, Byron Abram and Derek Abram. Glory revealed. I'm not the only re revelation of glory here. I see a couple of revelations of glory here. Henry, you are the Henry's family. Glory revealed. Nance, you are the Nance's family. Glory revealed. Mother Turner, you are the Turner family's glory revealed. Ladies and gentlemen, you are your ancestors' wildest dreams. Glory revealed. Yeah. It's imperative that we renew our minds to believe that our present sufferings cannot equate to our future glory. If I can encourage you to do anything this week, I want you to seek God's help with conditioning your mindset to believe and know without wavering that the suffering cannot and will not outweigh the glory. Now, here's a weapon that you're up against, because remember, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So you got to know what you're up against in order to fight effectively. You see, the enemy strategy is to get you to look at your life through the eyes of the flesh, <laughs> because if you're only looking at what you see in front of you, you can't see what's coming. You'll never see what actually happening in the spirit realm. All you'll see is what you're going through. All you'll see is your misery. All you'll see is the pain. All you'll see is what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? All you'll see or all you feel is defeat. And the devil knows that if he can shift your focus from spirit to flesh, he'll disable your most powerful weapon, your faith. For the Bible declares in 1 John 5 and 4 that uh, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Paul also talks about it in verse 5 of chapter 8. He says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death. Death don't necessarily mean six feet under either. There's nothing more dead than a person walking around merely existing and not living. Y'all catch that on the way home. For to be carnally minded is carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, meaning God and your carnality don't get along. And they never will. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The eyes of the flesh will always lead you to succumb to the suffering rather than push past the pain to manifest the revelation of glory God has placed inside of you. <laughs> it's kind of like working out. You know why I don't have a six-pack today? It's because as soon as I got to like 13 on the sit-ups and I felt that little, that little knot turning in my stomach, I was like, oh, I did enough. Oh, oh. No, no, no. You got to push past. That's when, look, so anybody who ever worked out, you know that when you start feeling that, that's when it starts. Oh, come on, church. That's what... When you start feeling the pain, that's when the workout really begins. 
The same way with our life. When we start feeling the pain, that's not when we quit. That's when we get the boots on. That's when we get the, sh- the, the sleeves rolled up. That's when we get ready to get the, the weapons and, and get the artillery and get ready to fight. Why? Because, because when we push past that pain, we'll begin to manifest the glory. You, you don't even know how much you can do. If you, if you, if you stop at the pain, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say push past it. In the same chapter of uh, chapter 8, verse 12, uh, the Bible declares that we have an obligation not to live according to the flesh and die, but we are obligated, someone shall obligate it, to live by the Spirit. How do we do that? Well, if you have the Spirit of God inside of you, you are considered righteous or just. And the Bible declares that the just shall live by what? Faith. For as many, verse 14 of chapter 8 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, meaning that he didn't save you to enslave you. Hmm. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself acts as a notary public and bears witness. You know what a notary public does, right? You, you have your documents, and then there's you, and they attest to whatever it is that's on those documents to be true and that you are the person who is signing that. The same way the Holy Spirit does to us. When we say that we are children of God, he takes our statement, lines it up with, with the will of God in our life and what the Bible says, and he puts our stamp or puts his stamp on us, just like the notary public. <laughs> So he bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so if we're children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, the the problem in that verse um, isn't the heir part. We like the fact that we're heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We like like the fact that we we share the glory with with Jesus, Um, but... That little part where it says suffer. <laughs> we we kind of wish that was. Lord, is there another word we can put there? Here's, here's how we share, though, in Jesus' suffering. We use the same measure of faith he did to carry out his purpose. What, is, what was Jesus' purpose? The cross. Remember, he's the author and finisher of our faith, according to Hebrews 12 and 2. So Jesus' entire attitude and activity was rooted and grounded in his belief that God sent him to this earth to redeem man back to God. Now, your cross isn't Jesus' cross, but you got a cross. And living by the spirit of God gives you the power to take up your cross, your purpose, and follow Jesus. Your cross may not require your hands to be outstretched. But it will require you to stretch outside of your familiar and comfortable space. Your cross may not require your feet to be nailed to it, but it will require you to walk a different path than your friends, your family, and even your own desires to fulfill destiny. Your cross may not come accessorized with the crown of 72 thorns, but it will come fully equipped with the crown of life for those who keep their mindset and their faithfulness on the things of God. For the Bible declares that if we are faithful unto death, He will give unto us a crown of life. All I'm saying is, is that Jesus suffered and died on the cross so that you can have the power to endure what it takes to carry and live with your cross. Because what's inside of you is greater than the circumstances around you. There is a glory that is waiting to be revealed that's greater than anything you ever imagined. I mean, eyes have not seen, it's still in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, uh, for my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It's still in Philippians 4. Uh, now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly. It's still in Ephesians 3. Uh, and, and, and the word of God um, says that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. But he will do everything that he has set out to accomplish. Whatever he promised, he will fulfill. That's the kind of God we serve. So why is this revelation of glory so important? I'm glad you asked. 
Why can't it just be revealed without me having to experience pain? That's a good question. I have a better answer. (laughs) Uh, Because everybody don't have the eyes of the spirit like you do. Hear me out. Everybody don't see what you see. All they see is what you're going through. All they see is your suffering. All they see is the natural course of action, assuming that you will crumble or fail like they would, naturally. (laughs) They can only see what's going on around you. That's what's brewing inside of you. (laughs) And and if the spirit of God is indeed inside of you, watch this. He can't allow your natural ability or even your affliction to be the sum total of your existence. I'll say it again. If the spirit of God is inside of you, he cannot allow your natural ability or your affliction to be the sum total of your existence. So guess what he does? He, the Holy Spirit takes his super ability, puts it on our natural ability, and manifests the glory that's already inside of us. The glory. That's the identification card of the believer. <laughs> the glory. That's what separates the wheat from the tear. <laughs> the glory. That's how the world knows who you belong to. It's not for your bragging rights. It's not for you to hold your head or hang your hat on because there's really nothing about our lives that can uh, give us entitlement to the glory of God. Um, So we can't take credit for it, but we can celebrate the fact that it rests on and shall be revealed in our lives. So here's some practical principles for your present predicament. What causes the glory to be revealed in our lives? Number one, when we pray. Three points, I'm going to be up out your way. I told you I wasn't going to be long, right? Uh, Prayer shines the spotlight on God's goodness and omnipotence. I'll say it again. Prayer shines the spotlight on God's goodness and his omnipotence. For uh, the Lord encourages us in Psalm 50 and 15 uh, to call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will glorify me. Uh, In John 14 and 13, he says, whatever you ask in my name, That will I do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. So when we pray, we we invoke the glory to come. Uh, When we pardon others, oh, y'all didn't think that was coming up, huh? Yeah, forgiveness. (laughs) Uh, The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Oh, it got quiet. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. Luke 6 and 36 also says, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the biggest blessings I received was after I accepted an apology that I never received. God blessed me indeed. When I learned how to forgive folk that didn't even know they needed to be forgiven. And, 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 and why is forgiveness so important? Because forgiveness allows you to produce the fruit of the spirit. You can't forgive nobody without love. That's the fruit of the spirit. You ever uh, forgive someone and instantly your mood change? You get kind of happy. You know, you light. Right. You feel better, right? That's joy. A fruit of the spirit. Um, You ever sleep good after you've forgiven someone? That's peace. Fruit of the spirit. It takes patience to forgive someone, but that's a lot of patience. A whole lot of patience. But that's good because patience is what? A fruit of the spirit. You realize it does take self-control not to knock somebody's head off who's, who's violated you, right? I mean, I mean. St. Matthew's is a real church. We can talk real, right? It take a whole lot of discipline. Not to give them the two-piece and a biscuit, and I'm not talking about the ones from Popeye's. But that's okay because self-control is a fruit of the spirit. You get my point, right? Making the decision to pardon others' offenses against you sets you up for the glory of God to be revealed in your life. Uh, So there's prayer. There's pardoning others. Then there's putting your trust in God. Uh, Putting your trust in God causes the glory to manifest in your life. Why? 
because he has proven himself to be faithful. Paul said it this way to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 17 and 18. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom to him be glory forever and ever. When you put your trust in God, you are you are saying, God, whatever the process is, I trust you. Now, I know that's hard. That's hard when you when you sit in it and it's heavy on you. <laughs> but 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 if you learn how to put your trust in God, we say it all the time. Proverbs three, five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. <laughs> Uh, if you actually apply that principle in your life, you'll be able to see the glory of God. How, how do you think sick folk get healed? By putting their trust in the Lord. How do you think bank accounts that are empty get filled? <laughs> By putting your trust in the Lord. It starts there. Also, inquire, it, it requires work. But trusting God, um, the work gets easier when you know that who you're working for pays on time. Jesus, I said it's easy to put in the work when you know the one that you're wor working for pays on time. God is never late, and he's never too busy. Whenever you call on him, he will answer. But you got to put your trust in him. Lastly, I'm getting out your way. Uh, when you praise God, hmm, devil, I feel like, I feel like the enemy is trying to shut up y'all praise today. It's, it's something it's something in here. I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking prophetically, but I sense something in the spirit. I sense that 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 there's a praise that needs to erupt in your life. And when you begin to praise God, you'll begin to see his. You really want to access the glory of God. You really want to live in the presence of God. If you start praising God, <laughs> look, start praising. God. You ain't got to be you ain't got to be all emotional either. You just be like, thank you, Jesus. And one thank you, Jesus, followed by another thank you, Jesus. And then another thank you, Jesus, followed by hallelujah, Jesus. And then another hallelujah, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you praise. You're an amazing God. And before you know it, whatever got you down ain't got you down no more. Why? Because the glory will fall. Bible the declares in Psalm 50 and 23 that he who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving glorifies me. See why I started the message with gratitude? <laughs> the psalmist also declares in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath the clean hands and pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity or sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. This is a shout. Lift up your head, <laughs> O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord that's mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who, who is this King of glory? He's the Lord of hosts, meaning he's the Lord Almighty. He's the King of glory. I'll end with this. I'll end with telling you why the devil don't like you. Uh, and, and, and maybe this should shed some light on your enemy. So you know how to fight them. <laughs> Reason why the devil don't like you is in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12, the Bible declares that he was the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and beauty. He lived in the garden of God and was adorned with every precious stone. So he was the seal of perfection. He was gorgeous. And God put every precious stone in him. 
So he had the very best that God created in him. The Bible says he literally lived in the presence of God. He went to and fro, up and down the mount of God, leading praise and worship. <laughs> everybody everybody, everybody uh, danced to his tune. The Bible says that um, he was adorned with every precious stone. He lived in the presence of God until wickedness was found in him. He sinned one time and got ousted from heaven, never to return again. Now, peep the contrast. Satan was made with every precious stone. You were made from the dust of the ground. <laughs> Satan had every jewel in him. God made you from the dust of the ground. Um, instead of having uh, precious stones, sealing with perfection, blase, blase, <laughs> God said, instead of doing that, I'm going to make you look like me because I'm going to make you in my image and after my likeness from the dust of the ground. Then he breathed into the nostrils of man. Push pause. If you're trying to get somebody to breathe, you don't breathe in a nostril. You breathe in a mouth. So why did God breathe into our nostrils and not our mouth? Because if he, bro if he breathed into our mouth, it would have went through our lungs. But the nostrils, he breathed into us the nostrils, and it went straight to our brain. Why? Because he wanted us to think like him. He wanted us to act like him. He wanted us to move like him. He wanted us to communicate with him. Hmm. So here we are, dusty, from the ground, individuals, with the breath of God in our bodies. And Satan sinned one time because he wanted to be God. And here we are with the DNA of God inside of us, walking around, sinning every day, walking around, not living in our purpose, walking around making a mockery of the, of the gift of life that God has given us. And Satan has to sit on the sidelines and watch you do it without any type of, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren, but he's never won a case against us. Mm, Y'all hear me out. I say he accuses us all the time, meaning he's pointing the figure all the time. Look, they doing this. Look, they doing that. Look, they doing this. I got kicked out one time. One time. It was just one time. But, but here's what happens. God, because he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, and he's omnipotent, he sent his son to die for those sins that we keep committing over and over again. Because he... he Mm, thank you, Jesus. Who? If if God was just a just God, nobody would be sitting here right now. But it's His grace and His mercy that keeps us from suffering the same fate that Satan did. Satan can't get back to heaven if he wanted to. He's done. He's over with. And so, look, when we praise God, this is what we do. We bring that sound of heaven that he was used to <laughs> down to earth. And it makes him cringe because it's the sound that he got ousted from. So if he can try to get you to shut up when, when, when it's time to praise God, if he can get you to be quiet and not give God the glory, if he can silence you, then maybe he can catch a break. <laughs> because every time you begin to praise God, whatever he's doing, he's got to pack up and go because he can't enter the presence no more. I'll say it again. <laughs> when, whenever you begin to praise God, Whatever he's trying to brew up in your life, it got to come to a complete halt. He got to get up out of there because he can't enter into the presence of God. And where the spirit of the Lord is, 
there is liberty. So when you begin to praise God and you begin to give him the fruit of your lips and when you begin to shout and give God glory, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, when you begin to praise God, look, the enemy's got to go. It's over for. It's over for. That's why he don't like you. <laughs> That's why he don't like you. That's why you don't like you. <laughs> but guess what? He ain't got to like me. <laughs> he ain't got to like you. Matter of fact, I don't like him either. So every time I see him walking around trying to dip his, his nose into my business, hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. Devil, you have no victory. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. Because in the name of Jesus, what do we have? Victory. In the name of Jesus, what's Satan got to do? Bounce. <laughs> Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or the price for my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Jesus died. He was buried. But he rose again on third day morning with all power in his hands. And guess what? <laughs> Forty days later, he ascended to heaven with the promise. He's coming back. And one day, he's going to crack the sky. And all those who are living by the Spirit, you'll begin to see face to face in total uh, in all totality, that your present suffering could never equate to your future glory. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> What a word from the Lord on today. Woo! That presence, sir. Thank you, sir. That, that, that word was for, 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 for me. I ain't worried about, you know. That was word for all of us. Amen. Amen. Because, I, I, you know, it, it's so funny because we were talking on the way here this morning. Received so many phone calls of stuff going on this week stuff you know folks passing away and 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 folks getting killed and car accidents and everything that's going on and it i ain't gonna tell you it don't hurt but this present suffering will be nothing compared to the glory hallelujah thank you thank you minister abrams for and Awesome word on today. I stand to give the invitation. We talked about, the preacher talked about knowing this God, but somebody may not know God in the parting of your sins. Somebody may not have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. After the word has been so eloquently delivered to you today, that spirit-filled word, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your time is now. In the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you have not accepted Jesus per Christ as your personal Savior, we invite you right now, whether you're in the sanctuary or you're online, we invite you to prayer for all of sin and falling short of the glory of God. We've all messed up somewhere along the line. But God, in his mercy <laughs> and his kindness, gave us a word today and given you an opportunity today to get it right. So if you've not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins before you now. I am a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, and on the third day, God the Father raised you 
from the dead. Save me live now, Lord Jesus. Be the Savior and the Lord of my life. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer with me, you're saved. You're saved. Jesus Christ will come in. We extend an invitation to you to the doors of the church were opened on that cross. But we extend an invitation to you to, if you've not been baptized, to be a candidate for baptism, you can come by Christian experience or you can come by later, by letter. But most important is that you come. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. As we stand here today, I might not see you tomorrow. But I want to rest assured and know that my hands is in the hand of the man from Galilee. And his name is Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen and amen. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye people. And shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. The voice of triumph. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Tied right on in from the blood still works. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. My, my, my. St. Matthew's Church family, it is offering time. It is offering time. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the part of our service. Amen. As we're coming at this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to cover the, the basket, please, on today. It is offering time. This is the time of our service when we bring our tithes and our offering. Amen. Our ushers are coming around with envelopes on today. Amen. And we just want to be a blessing. Amen. We miss our pastor on today, but we, he did need to get some rest. He's been doing a lot of stuff and going around and ministering all over the place. So we do and working a full-time job. And we thank God for an opportunity, amen, for him to get some rest on today. Amen. And we thank God for a messenger. We thank God for a thoroughbred. Amen. Amen. That brought, brought us the word on today. Amen. We're standing in the sanctuary. We're asking you to bring your offering. Amen. At this time, won't you come? Let us lift our hand to the offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this offering, O oh God. We thank you for the givers, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that had to give. And God, we ask that you bless those that didn't, O oh God. And God, we ask that you bless those, O oh God, 30, 60, 100 fold, O oh God, according to your riches and glory. And we thank you, O oh God, that it would be used, O oh God, for the benefit of your kingdom. These and all blessings we ask in your darling son. Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. 
Amen. So we are so excited that you joined us on today. Amen. We're standing all over, this, over the sanctuary. Again, thank God for you, Minister Abrams, for bringing us an awesome word on today. Thank you so much. Please keep our pastor lifted up in prayer, amen, and the entire St. Matthew's Baptist Church family. Don't forget this word. Tell your neighbor. It's, it's on YouTube. It's going to be on, uh, on the uh, live stream, and you will be able to watch and take notes, amen. But most of all, that the word would touch your heart, amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all the people of God said, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. You are dismissed. Amen. Could please you please return to the ushers your um, wristbands, please. Amen. So we can prepare them and get them ready for next year. Oh.